Valerie Hunt, Run RX. Happy Ask Me Anything Wednesday. So I really enjoy uh, talking to the community as I can. And most of the people that reach out with questions, I really appreciate it. So today we had a couple of questions come in. Uh, one was about, um, let's see, pain in the, in the back of the leg, in the hamstring calf area. And the other question I got was about, uh, Oh gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget. Oh, it's breathing. So I keep getting kind of a similar uh, two questions, and I'm just gonna answer. Like I said, I like to. I'm gonna go with the question of the first one because injury-related questions for me are the. That's where I am. Run RX, run pain-free. So if you don't already know, uh, kind of what it is we do or what is Run RX, um, definitely go to our website. But we have a lot of really great uh, things for you to try with us. Meaning. We have right now on our YouTube channel a 30-day reboot, which you started day one and go through 30 days, and it's a rotation of skill, strength, and self-care to make sure you are ready to run pain-free. And then we also have, if you have a pain or injury, through our website, there's a free quiz, and it helps you see maybe what's going on in your run. And then, of course, we have what's called the membership, and that's where you actually come all the way in. Oh, that was a question. Uh, where you come all the way in. So someone had asked me, if I came into the membership, how do I get personalized training since it's online? Well, this is the best part, is that you actually send me your videos, not just your running. We do gait analysis, and then I do video analysis of your skill practice as well. So it's great, you have 12 weeks of coaching. Because it's fun to watch me, but I, you know, I run three steps. <laughs> I need to see your running. And so, and I had someone else say, well, um, well, I can go get a gait analysis. I think she said, I got one at the shoe store. And I said, yeah, but the problem is two things. Um, one is, you know, they're one, usually selling a shoe. And second, if I give you a tip or something to do, and it's movement related, and you have to remember that whatever it is we have this conversation about, you, could, you get it like in your mind, but for the body to really adapt to a movement, it takes time, it takes practice, it takes repetition, it takes making sure you're doing it correctly. So I always tell people like, you know, if you take your kids to, uh, I don't know, they're gonna do swimming, and you go to sign up with a swim instructor. I've never met a swim instructor that's like, oh, I don't know, one 30 minute session should be fine. <laughs> right, so to be really careful with, running itself is a repetitive event. For most of us, it's about 1,500 steps a mile, and so each step I take should be right because I'm doing the same thing over and over, right? So it's the missteps that we're feeling. So a misstep, which could be, by the way, if you like fall off a curb, that's a different kind of injury, right? I'm talking about things like shin splints, I'm talking about plantar fasciitis, IT band, hip, knee, low back, whatever, that we go through in running, it's from the misstep. And so if I have less and less and less missteps, then I just am running and I'm gonna have much less potential for injury. That's how I got into this, by the way. When I very first started running, I'm a fitness trainer. I was teaching fitness, group fitness, you name it, I taught it. Lots of weight training, lots of uh, step, and all that good stuff. So then I was like, hey, this was in the 90s, back in the 90s, they had an all women's um, triathlon. So I went out, here I go, I'm gonna do this triathlon, and then had a 5K, so like, oh, we're gonna train for 5K running, so I start you know, running and then I hear about marathons. I'm gonna go from a 5K to a marathon. Why not? <laughs> I was young. I had never in my life experienced, um, I don't know, a marathon. I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know people ran those things. And I went on, by the way, to run a lot more. I kept running. And then when I, when I figured out, it doesn't have to hurt so bad because when I first started running and it hurt, everyone was like, well, I hurt too. So we'll just hurt together, connected community. <laughs> well, that wasn't good enough for me. So I actually went out and sought how to run. And it's been 21 years now that I've been teaching this actual method of running. It's called Pose Method. And it still continues to work. As good as technology has gotten, as good as the shoes seem to keep going back and forth or whatever, it doesn't matter. Because once you learn how to move correctly, then you can only get better at movement. So just think about that, the weirdness of the beginning. Uh, what total time would you dedicate to complete the days, the string? Okay, good, good question. Okay, here's another question. Let me, let me read the questions. 
How, what is the right amount of fall and how do you know you've reached it? Uh, my foot strike on each foot is different. What's going on with that? Well, the foot strike. <laughs> Chronic back and hip pain. Uh, which water belts do you use? All right, good questions. Okay, let's go through them. Thank you. Okay, I even have my glasses on today because I'm really nearsighted, so I wanna make sure I can see when there's a question. So this, I'll put, put a couple of things together. Um, when you, okay, let me, let me answer the first one. So the first question was, how much time do I have to dedicate to my practice? Um, so, you know, again, like the membership's 12 weeks, right? The reboot, the reason I did this is if you go through the reboot, each day is a practice. And some of the days might just be stretching your calf, by the way. I tell people, you have to dedicate the amount of time, one, that you're willing, but to learn something is a dedication of not so much time, but focus. So five minutes of focused time daily would be amazing. Of focused skill practice. You see what I mean? The skill practice itself of what it is running is, has to be thought about as well as done. So keep that in mind. Then I tell people what I tell, what the way I recommend it, is you add the skill practice, add it to your warm-up. You're already going to go running. So if I do a very consistent skill warm-up before I run, then I've got my, I'm about to go running. It makes sense to practice before I run. So it's kind of a nice way to integrate it. And then I do post-run um, strength and recovery. So then around my runs, I'm doing the work so I can keep running. That's just the only way it works. However, what's really, really cool, and it goes right into the next question. So five, I mean, I tell people like five minutes, give me two. Like schedule for five, focus for two. Like even right now, it's hard to stay focused, right? I mean, we gotta go, we gotta go. I don't miss my run. I understand that mentality, I'm that same person. But I tell you what, if you do stuff like this, so let's be movement, let's be movement oriented today. <clears throat> All right, everybody, bend your knees. Place your body weight on the ball of your foot. Hold like there's a skewer running through the top of my head, my ears, shoulders, hips are over right down my ankles. This is your center of mass. What that means is it's the middle of your body. It's the center of your mat, of your body, okay? So we're gonna just call it the hip because we can see that from hip bone to hip bone, everything on the inside, that's your center. That's what gravity acts on. So think of like a tire, right? And the center of the tire that, right, that's spinning. If you hit the gas, the tire doesn't leave the car. It does, however, spin faster, but it never changes its shape. In running, so this rocking back and forth, sorry, is to help you sense where is my body weight. When you're running, you wanna be what's called one body weight. Your body responds to where the foot touches. Your body, immediate, your brain senses where the foot is, and then it's time for action. This is that simple. So we have to do this. What's our job? What's our action? Well, our action is that when we feel the ground, we pull it. We pull our foot up off the ground. We only pull our foot up off the ground. We only go up. Up, up, up. So see, I'm, I'm understanding now, okay, my job then is to go up. Well, if my job's to go up, how do I go forward? Important question, falling. So right now, can you feel that if you take your whole center forward, now you've got to bring your ears and shoulders with you. This is, remember, there's a skewer running through the top of my head. So I'm falling, connected, you see? I can only go back and forth. I can't go side to side because I've got a metal rod through the top of my head. <laughs> I need you to just have an image with me. So when you go forward, can you feel? You almost have to grab with your toes. I don't want you to go quite that far. I want you to press your hips forward so you can really feel the body weight is on the ball of the foot. This is falling. This is allowing gravity to let me move forward. Now, we're on two feet, so we're never going to fall. So, but if I'm on one foot and I fall, I have two choices. I have choice number one, I can fall forward and pull, 
which is what I would prefer you did, then you're back in pose. Your body can only fall in running from the running pose. Isn't that cool? So if I practice the running pose, which we'll do in a second, and I allow my body to free fall, because gravity's already here, and I simply pull, I will continue to travel forward. Because my body weight is traveling forward, and my foot will keep up with my body weight. So then I'm pulling, by the way, 2% of my body weight. 2% of my body weight using 10% active muscle contraction. Instead of what most people do is they take their foot. We all run through the pose, by the way. If you ever send me a gait analysis, you will see your pose. You already run in pose, gravity's already with us, and your foot eventually comes off the ground. So those base elements are there. There's a blueprint for running. So it's already there for you. You want to pull, and most people do this. They go like that. They put the foot down. Most of you guys are running by looking for the ground. You're trying to control foot strength. Unfortunately, you're doing someone else's job. And when you do someone else's job, they usually don't like that. <laughs> do your job. So my job is to pull. Guess what? Gravity brings your foot down. And the sooner you develop that understanding and that relationship, you'll have such a better relationship because gravity's not very nice. You keep getting in the way and you keep putting your foot down, there's your shin splint. If you're running, so someone said, I'm hitting the ground different on my right and my left. Stop hitting the ground. You see what I mean? You're thinking the wrong thought. You're running by putting your foot down. So you're running by reaching. And if I reach my foot for the ground, look at my back one still pull. But unfortunately, I'm not in pose so that I'm stuck here in this weird off balance position. Your body will recover pose. Your body will always find balance. And then it's, unfortunately, you're like, oh, well, here I am, push and reach, right? Because you're, feel, you're waiting you're looking for the ground. You're running by looking for the ground. You have to let that go. So someone said on there, I'm recovering from hip pain or back pain. Reaching your foot to the ground three times your body weight. Pulling, 2%. <laughs> three times, so that's just a huge difference. And once you start to shift how you're treating your body, your body will thank you you will reduce impact 53%. I promise your hips, your back, your knees, your IT bands, your all those things will start to reduce and eventually go away simply because you're not just jarring your back and hip every time you hit the ground. Let go of jobs that are not yours in running and you'll have such a better run. So let's just go through this real quick, okay? Three minutes, bend your knees. The reason we wanna have our knees bent is to use what's called muscle elasticity. And muscle elasticity we all have and can continue to develop till we're 85 years old, so no excuses. All right, so leaving my knees bent, not squatting, my knees are just bent, you wanna pull using your hamstring, ankle up under hip. That's your job in running. Now, in practice, you pull to pose. In running, you only break contact with the ground. Again, I have to think that because it's not action-oriented. There's no way you're gonna go running right now and be like this. This is so weird. <laughs> you understand? It's a concept. It's a concept. You will always feel pull. You will feel that. You just need to know the reality of what running is, is that you don't have to work past breaking contact with the ground. So those of you that are walking or just getting started into running, you can stay right here. Reducing impact, traveling, uh, less stress on the joints. If I'm a sprinter, I'm not, but if I was, and I'm gonna just do a lot of fast running, then I need to have the ability to hold my fall, and my foot will absolutely pull incredibly high, but not because I'm doing any more work with my feet. I'm still doing this, it's just that my hamstring reflex will finish the pull, and if sprinters, sprinters look somewhere like this, Marathoners are here, uh, you know, I just started running or I'm on a trail. You see, the difference in height of the pull isn't, isn't what Valerie's doing or you're doing. 
it's in response to your angle of fall. So whether I'm sprinting or just wanting to run down the block, still running. So if you practice running, by just practicing first, I'm in a running pose. Ears, shoulders, hips, lifted ankle, in line over the ball of my foot. This right here, just the pose practice, develops strength in your foot, in your ankle, in your knee, in your hips, in your back, because you're holding balance and you're holding stability on that one foot. You want to be very stable on your support foot when you run, because that's how you're going to be holding yourself up for 1,500 steps a mile. So however many miles you want to go, this never changes. You've got to hold ears, shoulders, hips in line. So just practicing the running pose itself will actually help you improve your posture <laughs> in walking and standing and everything else. All right, so practicing the pose, the action of pulling, when we practice here in place, it's very exaggerated so you can develop your relationship with your hamstring. We want to get just the feeling. It's not that we need more strength in our hamstring, right? Because we're only using 10% during the run. However, just like I want to have strong hips to hold my shoulders over my hips, I want to have a nice strong hamstring to be able to pull. So just the pull drills themselves are going to help you with that. So in place, this is a strength drill because I'm using the hamstring to pull. During my run, I'm just using a very little amount of that same hamstring. Falling practice with a wall, with bands, with a friend, anything you can do to help yourself feel. What does it feel like to simply free fall so that when you run, it just feels good to free fall and pull up as a response. But guys, you have to go through the gait cycle to kind of understand why I do all these drills I do on the Instagram is because the more you develop muscle elasticity, the base of running is a hop. And the more I get comfortable with rebounding off the ground, then when I fall, my foot will rebound. But I won't bounce. I won't bounce, why? Because my body's falling forward. My foot pulls up, there's no bounce. But I practice bouncing for strength and elasticity so that I don't have tension in my calves, I mean, I can tell you this. I went through, by the way, when I very first started running, um, like I said, a lot of hamstring issues. I've had the shin splints, I've had planners, had IT band, had sciatica one time. I haven't had any of that. I mean, I run, I don't run huge distances anymore, but I've run marathon, I've run, I've run a lot. And the thing is, is that if you do the balance of some skill work, very minimal, you have one job. <laughs> You gotta do a little elasticity work, and you include the strength and the self-care, because and when I say strength, like I just showed you, this is a strength exercise. If you look at the YouTube, my strength stuff is, is body weight. I'm not asking you to do weightlifting, but I have to be strong enough to hold my own body weight. 1,500 steps a mile, my own body weight. That's important, so you have to practice holding your body weight. If you're running, think, I'm sorry, if you're walking, still hold the hips and lead with hips and pull. Like start thinking about being, using gravity in all of my movement, using the correct movement, but running itself isn't fast walking. Just keep that in mind, they're two separate movements because walking has two feet on the ground. So yes, you can pull when you walk, absolutely. However, running is fall pull. So keep that in mind, they're not the same. Take that time to work on your falling like I said, your hips will let go, all of that. Uh, by the way, the last question somebody asked, um, right, and by the way, so someone said pre-run stretches. Uh, go to my that YouTube channel, and I do every morning a hip opener that's really great for your hips and your back. But the reality is, unless you correct the running, you'll continue to have pain from running. Because if I actually am running correctly, like I said, that 53% reduction of impact is what's going to really save your back and your hips. Nothing against stretching, because stretching is great. There's a thousand stretches, they're all really good. Um, I do every day what's called a seated hip opener. And again, this is free in my YouTube, my practice, the hip openers. But you can get on a tangent of stretching. There's a lot of really good stretches. There's only one running pose. You see, so are, how much are you willing to put in? Practice 
1,500 steps a minute. I can't stress it enough. It's not a stretch that's going to help you. It's you standing here and getting stronger in your own pose. I'm telling you, it's going to help you with walking, sitting, whatever you do, because you will start to stand with your ear, shoulders, hips in line. You'll use your body's weight to move forward. Connect with movement. Like, what is movement? And start to work with free falling. It's amazing. The fact is that most of us don't realize we can even accelerate with gravity, so we're fighting it. We're pushing, we're reaching, we're pumping our arms. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know I was spending too much time on the ground. That's where the injuries are coming from. So the more elasticity you develop, the quicker you pull up from the ground, that's going to be. And someone asked, how do I know how much to fall? Well, you own, this is the beautiful part. If I'm running in place, I only need to fall as much as I want to start traveling. If you want to go faster, you're going to have to increase your fall. How do I increase my fall? We gotta practice. It doesn't just happen. <laughs> Use a wall. See, I'm falling. When I'm running, because you'll understand what is falling, if you want to fall more, you will, because you allow that to happen. And then your foot will pull quicker in response. Uh, many people, when they first start trying to fall, they do this. So they think they're falling. It's called a false fall. So they're out there and they're like, whoo! But they're not going anywhere. If, you don't, if you're not actually uh, accelerating, then you're not falling, because falling is acceleration. So make sure that if you feel like you're, whoo, I'm out of breath, or I'm having to work a little harder, check, am I holding my ear, shoulders, hips in line, or am I bending? That's really, really important. So if I'm feeling low back pain, probably I'm here or I'm here. Correcting just your running pose itself will correct so many low back, hip, ankle issues because you're going to put yourself back, you know, where you need to be. And then the elasticity steps. The same thing. The reason your foot strike is different is because you're thinking about strikes. So once we get rid of your thought of foot strike and you simply just pull up, you will find a nice balance because it's going to change the way you look at, at your running or feel with your running. Because if you're landing different, it's because you're landing. If you are looking for the ground instead of just pulling when you sense it. Uh, last question was gear. Um, that's not so much my thing, but if you are into, um, like if you're a trail runner, you know, I think I used to use that Nathan vest or North Face. You gotta play with it. Honestly, guys, I'm not a gear person. You're welcome, sorry. <laughs> Minimalist. <laughs> But when I used to do a lot of trail runs, I used to I used to handheld I handheld use Nathan. I used to handheld a bottle, and then I switched to wearing a vest. So some people like that, some people don't. I don't love the sound of water sloshing. And then the reality is, is that where you most places you run, there's like if you're running a road race, there's some water stops everywhere. So um, you got to play with gear. Sorry, but that's the brand I've heard of. I know. I would definitely, I'm sure if you go to any comment section, people will give you a thousand. If you comment on here, I bet people would uh, give you some great ideas. But it, holding a bottle is fine if you want to hold a bottle. Definitely trade arms. You're not <laughs> off balance, right? Or put one down on your run route. But otherwise, I'm here to help you work on just your running itself. So any questions you have on running or pain injury, just put them in the comments, reach out, and I'll get to them next week. Meanwhile, I'll just keep putting out some stuff for you guys to practice. Thank you so much.